Well, when it comes to China, no one had better insight into this unique relationship than Ambassador James Lilly. Mr. Lilly died this past November, and with his passing, America also lost one of its most accomplished diplomats. Lilly joined the CIA in 1951 when Asia was convulsed with conflict and poverty, and communism seemed to be ascendant. Over the next four decades, Jim Lilly's career embodied Asia's remarkable transformation and America's evolving posture in that region. Now, right in the middle of almost every significant conflict or foreign policy development, Mr. Lilly ran clandestine operations in China and the secret war in Laos. After Nixon's opening of China, he became the first CIA station chief in Beijing, helping solidify our defense commitment to Taiwan and playing a key role as U.S. ambassador in encouraging South Korea's transition to democracy in 1987. I had the privilege of meeting Ambassador Lilly during the twilight of his career. Always engaging and always opinionated, he shared with me bits of wisdom gleaned over a lifetime of international experience. Ambassador Lilly, with everything that is going on currently in the Middle East, do you think sometimes U.S. policymakers may be putting Asia on a back burner? I think tactically sometimes this preoccupation with the Middle East gets in the way, but we do spend a lot of time on Asia because I think American policymakers know that Asia is the land of the future. Explain and that to me. Mid East, well, because of economic development, because of trade, this is the fastest growing area in the world. More of our exports go to Asia than any other area in the world. It's all about finance, economy, money, commerce. Asia's the big actor on the block, China, Japan, uh, Southeast Asia. So we are, we've got our eye fixed on that, and we also are aware that the second most important military power in the world is in Asia. It's China. It's not the Soviet Union, Russia anymore. It's China. And they're far behind us, but nevertheless, we watch it very closely because it's building up, it's increasing, it's improving, and it's aimed at us. So we have to pay attention to it. Many see China as this huge economic threat. Do you, could it also be an economic opportunity for the U.S.? Oh, I think definitely, no question about it. Our exports to China have increased exponentially in the last five years. They've gone way, way up. It's the fastest growing export market for United States in the world. They begin to buy our stuff, and as they get the middle class rising, they'll buy more. Uh, yeah, they're a challenge. Sure they are. They're going after energy resources that challenge us competitively. We've got to be smart. We've got to be tough. We've got to take them on. But this is not a reason for war or anything like this. We both are trying to get oil to fuel our economies. Their demands have increased a great deal, and they've gone after places like Iran, Sudan, countries we, we, we don't touch. They share Nigeria with us. They share Venezuela with us. We can work it out. We can work it out. So as a challenge, yes. As a threat, no, I don't think so. What do we need to know as Amer American business people? What do we need to know as American business? How do we work with China? How do we take, for lack of a better term, take advantage of what's going on in China? Well, we've got probably one of the largest chambers of commerce in the world is in Shanghai. Probably two to 3,000 members, increasing at 100 a month. Most of them making profit. Tough market, hard sell, market research, due diligence has to be done. American businessmen can make it. They're Profits are good, but they've got to be tough and smart, and they've got to get into a very competitive market. There's a demand for American goods. They like our consumer items. Walmart is very big in China. They like these outlets that give them everything. They'll buy the products. They, uh, they are a huge telecommunications market. They're producing a lot, but they aren't keeping up with the, uh, with the modernization. 
So I, there's a lot to be done. I think American business can do a lot in China, and the way our exports are going up is encouraging. Businessmen are going in there and finding the Chinese in the service industries. We've really pushed in there. Insurance, hotels, banks, that is where we are very competitive. And the Chinese have begun to open these markets to us. We all can, also can have our own distribution networks in China. That is helping us. Ambassador Lilly, thank you very much. Thank you for asking me. Born and raised in China, throughout his life, Mr. Lilly combined a deep and abiding affection for Asia while also maintaining a patriot's love for America.